How pathetic can some people be? I stayed at a nice hotel in Cancun, a little too fancy for my taste. Type of place they leave chocolate on your pillow before you go to bed. Who started this? Yeah, I think four out of five dentists recommend a Zagnut bar before you hit the sack. <laughs> I sleep real well with five pounds of sugar running through my bloodstream. Why don't you just leave me a vial of crack and a pot of black coffee on the pillow? If you want to make my stay more pleasant at a hotel, why don't you start by removing that jet engine from the air conditioner? <laughs> Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KCOC. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Well, see, you got to start staying at nicer places if that's the case. Because if you're still staying at places where the air conditioner is mounted in the window or below the window, see, that's your problem. You got to start. Okay, this is where I this is where I go back and forth with that. Because those things are loud. When it's central, yes, you don't have to deal with the loudness that Nick DiPaolo was just talking about. You don't have to deal with uh, you know it only being concentrated in one corner of the room, but also. You got to deal with when it's central. You got to deal with figuring it out, and sometimes you can't figure it out. The thermostat yeah. on the wall. Yeah, like it's sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's or in your fan- case probably seventy five. It's, uh, it, it's it's not standard to what you're used to using at your house. Gosh, right? I want to say I stay in a lot of hotels. I think I stay in more than you do because of my other job, and I just walk in. It's on auto. If it's not on auto, usually it's on the off position. Auto sixty eight, done. Is it? Maybe I'm lucky and I've just been staying in places that have been updated or something. But how is it hard? I, I don't. Because at least when that air conditioner unit or the heater unit, depending on where you're staying, what time of year you're staying in, in it, when it comes on like a jet engine, you're like, okay, at least I've got this thing figured out. You know where, it's working. Yeah, where you know it's working. Whereas you go in there and you hit, okay, occupied auto. I want it to be 74. And you said it, and you're like, all right. You can't hear it. You're looking around, you're like, <laughs> you're going up to the registers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're sticking okay. your hands okay. up, you're like. I, that's fair, I've done I that. I think it's blowing out hotter yeah. air. I, the, I don't, 74, who sets it at 74? I love 74, 74 is the number, no, it's 60, the magic number. 68, boy, we'd free, you'd, you'd have to be in a park if no, you were in the is, same is, room is, with me. It, it, it's the, it, the difference is. You live in South County where it's cloudy every day. You used to live in South County. Right. And I 68 would have been fine for me now. 74 is fine for me now. I live in North County. It's warm. Yeah, you're like my parents. They have it at 78 when they go to their right. house in Havasu. That's fine. Because they're acclimated. Because it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. 100 there's, there all the time. There's something to being ac- cool. acclimated. There's something to that. So I requested when they had added the addition on their house to put one of those air conditioners in my room. It's actually really nice. It's the, Nick, the, the Nick DiPaolo air conditioners? Yes, the, but it's the quiet. The jet engine? But it's quiet, actually. But it's nice because I can close the door and I can keep it at 68. You need to go to Idaho. Yeah, what is what What did I do that, that people are doing now? Or I'm sorry. Well, that's coming up. That's coming up. Yes. Okay, I'm getting confused. <laughs> Let me have some more coffee. This Good. is Idaho. Hey, if it's confusing you, that means it's, it's confusing the listeners, too. I love that. Everybody. Uh, the Big Idaho Potato Hotel. Okay, this is a fake potato that used to travel on the back of a semi-truck for the Idaho Potato Commission to promote the state's crop. Kind of like the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile? Yes. Now, they were done with this. They're like, okay, that's not going to be our message anymore. A tiny house developer went in, uh, turned it into a rental home. Okay. It has air conditioning, heating, and an indoor fireplace. It's listed as a farm stand. It's a one-bedroom potato that can host two people and has a queen-size bed. Um, Sounds pretty cool. It's Idaho. It's a potato. $200 per night to stay in the big Idaho potato. Now, around here, I'd say that's a screaming deal, probably market value. But it's Idaho. Well, there's some great places. Sun Valley. Yeah, but this is not a great place. This is an Idaho I tell you, anybody, if you've never been to Lewiston, Idaho, it's in farmland. You, you got to go vacation in Lewiston. Don't, whatever you do. <laughs> um, it's it's 25 miles south of Boise, in located in farmland because that's where it oh, ended wow. up. That's like no man's land down there, right? Yeah, it's 28 feet long, 12 feet wide, 11 and a half feet tall, 336 square feet, which would be like a, at least a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Are they getting two hundred dollars? Yeah, are they getting two hundred dollars a night. Yeah, they're, the they're getting it because it's it's, it's kitschy. It's, it's kitschy. Yeah, it's a kitschy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, the president of the Idaho Potato Commission. 
He's got to be excited. He is. He's like, hey, this is, it's like the rebirth of this potato they used as marketing that they thought they've set out to pasture and this tiny home lady. Talk about reducing your carbon footprint instead of having to build another vacation home. You're able to use a potato that went from town to town. I so see. Impressive. So you, impressive for Idaho. Do you ever look at Airbnb postings in your neighborhood? No. Like, you know, I drive Uber, so I'll drive, drop people off at a lot of Airbnbs, and some of them are like way nice. And some of them are like, hold on a second. They build a closet enclosure off the back of their house, and they put out some danishes on a picnic bench for you, and they call it a, they call it a night stay. It's a closet, for God's sake. It's interesting. The Airbnb market is a very interesting market. And I don't know much about it, and I'm weirded out by everything you see you on love, the news. You love hotels. I'm weirded out by everything you see on the news. You're going to have cameras in there, and then you're going to come back and watch. I mean, nobody wants to see me, but... But I when mean, you can just, get, like, a full house... like See, the problem is you don't travel in packs. If you're going to travel in a pack... No, I get it, because we had friends that came up from the s- Southern California, and they stayed at one. There was three families that stayed in one in Paso Robles. And so fun. It was cheaper than a hotel room would have been. Yeah. It was, cheaper than, and it was it's under cool 150 because you, bucks a night. you're hanging out together. Yeah. You're all you're together, not, yeah. It's, not like, it's not like, you know, you go to room... It's 362, and I'm in room 502, and uh, yeah. Cynthia over here is in uh, room 235. We'll meet up down in the lobby. That's not, there's nothing fun about that, you know? This is like, you know, everybody's getting drunk by the pool. In this case, you're getting drunk in the middle of a farm field outside of Potato. So, when in Idaho, live as the Idahoan does, and that is usually sitting outside of a trailer drinking. <laughs> Potato vodka. The problem is they're doing it for two hundred dollars a month. You're doing it for two hundred dollars a night because <laughs> it's a potato. So what? You're giving people dumbass of the day that rent this potato. Anybody that spends two hundred dollars a night to stay twenty five miles outside of Boise in the middle of a farm field is an idiot. Are you telling me your parents wouldn't do this? No. Yeah. No, but you know who might? I think I, my family. My family, <laughs> my immediate nuclear family, because my daughter would be like, I want to stay in a potato. Yeah. So they got something there. But I'm just going to say that if you seek this out, we'll put the link up to this over on our Facebook page. And um, I'm going to say customers of the, I guess, um, short-term tenants hey, of, the, of the potato. Hey, not everybody can say they spent the night in a fake potato. Short-term tenants <laughs> of the potato. You're Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. It's Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. What's the worst hotel, motel, slash, you've ever stayed in? Oh, you know, I honestly think it was a hotel, and I think it was in Vegas with you. When we went to cover the first Chuck Liddell fight at the MGM Grand, we stayed at oh, Kitty Corner at the Excalibur. Do you remember oh, yeah. how just beat up that room was? Yeah, that was? It was thrashed. It was on the cusp of the abolishment of uh, smoking laws in, in Vegas hotel rooms. So, uh, Oh, wait, no, I got one that'll beat it. And we turned the sink on, and the water was rust orange. Because mm-hmm. like, this, we did, was, we this was a comp room because we were media. So media gets crapped on. I know everybody thinks this is like a super glamorous job. And like, yeah, you do get to do st- certain things like that for free. But when you do, you might as well be staying in a potato. <laughs> in Idaho. Because I'd rather, the potato, I guarantee you, is Instead cleaner. of a this hotel like casino on, in Vegas. Like, it's like on one of the first couple floors of the Excalibur. And it was a, a non-updated room. And um, it was a room that probably had not been stayed in for six months prior. Well, that was when you were smoking. Yes, I was. And you wanted a smoking room, Mm -hmm. and we had to share. And it was fine because I I smoked too. Oh, did I smoke? I smoked. I smoked. Yeah, we both did. We're like, we're in Vegas. You're smoking when you're in Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to smoke. And I remember the room felt filthy until we both started smoking. And then once we both lit a cigarette, I was like, yeah, you know what? It's not that bad. It's not so bad. When in Vegas, hey, give me some. Some dirty cocktails and some dirty glasses. And I think we could open the window, which is so rare for a Vegas hotel. But you can open it up enough to just get the smoke. Just to get some air. Yeah. And, uh, it wasn't you were nobody was jumping out. But of yeah, there was a place I went last summer. I was up in uh, Lake Roosevelt, which is in eastern Washington, and I was in this little tiny town. I think you went there when you were covering high school football, north of Spokane. You went on a road trip up there. There's the a guys. couple of towns I went to there. I I couldn't tell you what. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah. Colville. 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 
Uh, I think it was Colville. Uh, there's another one that was a lake. I want to say it was like Medicine Lake or something uh, like that. Yeah, I guess nobody even knows what we're talking about anyways. But it's a little fishing town. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So it's a little town that has a couple of diners, a couple of bars, a post office, a gas station, and the old, uh, access to the lake. Northeast Washington uh, And map. so they've got the true like bait style motels where you drive up in front of the door. And I'm telling you what, we get there. And do you know what an ozonator is? Uh, no. It's something they use in hotel rooms to uh, get out smoking smells or stinky smells. And so you go in there and it smells like chemicals. And we had to air out the room because the guy had just pulled the ozonator out. I think I'm saying that right. Ozonator. That sounds like such a cool thing. And I'm literally <laughs> like sleeping. I pull back the, uh, the, the, the bed sheets. I know where you were. Kettle Falls. Kettle Falls. That's it. Yes. I had to look it up. And um, well, I mean, kind of I want to say this room was a hundred bucks a night. It had two beds in it, and since my buddy said he wanted to pay for the room, I said, "All right, you get the queen bed. I'll take this the full." And I and I I go over the bed and I pull back the sheets a little bit, and there's there's little those little earwig creepy crawly earwigs on the bed, and I'm thinking, ah, what the hell? We're gonna go camping in two days anyways, and there's they're gonna be anywhere. So he's like, "Oh, look at the earwigs." I'm like, "Ah, just pretend you're camping." And so we threw our sleeping bags down, and I slept on this bed, which I swear to God, concrete floors were softer then. But that was uh, fishing little fishing towns. Staying in those motels, those are the shadiest motels. Yeah, you don't understand the potato. On. Yeah, I would have been. Potato. I would have been happy to pay for that. I put potato. a picture of the potato up on our Facebook page uh, with, with the art article that accompanies it. And this thing doesn't even look cool. And the problem with it is they didn't even bother putting like a, a window in it or anything. You know, so here you are in a farm field. Yeah, you got air conditioning, but have you ever been on a cruise and stayed on the inside room where they don't have a window? No, that is. It is sucks, okay? Don't they still have curtains in the room to make yeah. you think there's yes, a window behind exactly. it? exactly. It's a faux window. And I, they probably do this inside the potato. I don't know. But it's the it's, it's terrible. It is so bad not having a window in, in a room. Like every, You've been on a cruise without a window? Yes. Do you get... We did this like free little cruise because we were like, you know, the customers in the past or something like that. They sent us a really good deal. But the thing is, you had to take an inside room. And... Or you could pay extra for the window room, but it wasn't like a balcony. All it was was a little portal, like a little circle window. I was like, well, let's save the money and stay on the inside. Yeah. Staying on the inside is... You, did, you were never in your room. No, never. Which was kind of cool for a cruise because in the past, because we got you know balcony rooms, we'd always stay in the room. Because I, yeah, the hang, one cruise I went on, we hung in we there. We out of the balcony. And it was, that was fun. But we got to go out to the public areas on this one because the room was terrible. It was the worst experience ever. Did you have a problem sleeping in there? Yeah. Did you feel sick at all if it I was felt rough? like I was trapped. Yeah. Because like, you're in the center of the ship. A little claustrophobic. And you're claustrophobic and you just felt like, I don't know, there's not like a, if you wanted to escape and you needed an alternate route, the only route you had was your door. That was it. You didn't, you couldn't bang out a window. Even though I know I couldn't bang out a portal on a ship, at least I could think I could try to do so. That was a little bit menacing. And this potato doesn't have a window in it. It's strange. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.